The Ride Kick is a bicycle trailer with a built-in electric motor. By connecting it to the back of your bike, it will push you, essentially turning your bike into an electric bike. I had the opportunity to visit the headquarters in Loveland, Colorado and see exactly how these are manufactured and ask the founders all kinds of questions. You'll see all of that and more in the following interview. There are wheels, stack of wheels. Oh, look at that. This is where it all goes Yellow down. Yellow bins hold all of our smaller components. Um, some of these black bins hold the other components. Uh, look at that. The build team nice. now is putting stickers on the bed. Oh, sweet. We got a call under fire. And it's really not even good. Yeah. Oh, that line isn't... Not, not cut through. Yeah. You can come over here and take a picture from here. Sweet. Oh, and these are the battery packs. And you guys sell these extra, right? Yep. Too? They are going to be Hey, I recognize that voice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Don, I've got a little clearance here. Nice to meet you. My name's Court. Yeah. This is so cool to see. Yeah, hey, so cool that you're here today. Hey, <laughs> Court, how are you? Hey, nice to meet you, Chris. Yeah, nice to meet you. I yeah. love the video you did. Thanks. So their hands are going to be the ones doing the creation. Actually making these things. Right. Okay, and it looks like you guys are doing a great job. They just, I mean, I, I got a chance to ride with one. It looked just like that, and it was a ton of fun. That's awesome. So we've got like the little bit, little bit larger size. No, this one's the same. They're the same. Oh, they're the same, but this one's black. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sweet. Paintable. Okay. Paintable. So you can customize uh, these things. That's what we're yeah, hoping. People are going to pimp out the ride kits for sure. Yeah. Like lights or stickers. Oh, know, fun things better. that you want on it. Fenders. Are fenders, fenders also in the works? We, fenders are on the drawing board. Okay. That's right. That's cool. Yeah. My bike has fenders and yeah, some of the wetter places. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's are right. you looking for beta testers? Because I know someone who's <laughs> fairly reckless on a bike. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Put this thing through can its they, paces, can maybe. Can video while riding? I, yes. <laughs> He's, he, I think he can. I, I think, think that's, can. that's part it's of the fun. Proven. Yeah, yeah. Wow, very cool, very cool. And these are, are these different wheels than the ones I saw on the on the beta yeah. unit? A little bit different. Do they, is this for water traction or what's the... Are they a little bit more like slicks, so they roll smoother or um, something? Those are stout enough such that you c it'll uh, resist a whole bunch of thorns. So these are really thorn-proof. Okay. Um, although you still can get a flat, and they're stout enough such that you can ride flat. And oh. Get all the way home with wow, and that's uh, you know because I imagine with this thing pushing you a lot too, that could wear through softer rubber. So maybe this is it. Just sounds more durable in general. I've got 1,200 miles <coughs> of my first set of tires, and there's about a millimeter of wear. So yeah, we got it designed for long-lasting. Wow, that's pretty cool. So when you rode six months ago, mm -hmm. the controller board was in one of its early generations. Oh so yeah, the little now so toggle. New and improved, and after listening to all of our beta testers yes. and other users, we've uh, taken a look at how we can make that be more user friendly and still and do its job incredibly well. Yeah, maybe you can explain. Yeah, so if you want to talk about the, here I'll get a little the, the controller board has built-in diagnostics. So say your throttle's not plugged in, which is the, the situation on this unit right this second. Mm -hmm. um, there's a display on the, the controller. You push and hold this button, and it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. Interesting. So, And you still got the USB. I love that. So you can charge your phone or... Yes. Whatever you, can you charge got. your phone, you can Fuse. upgrade firmware through Now USB. we're going to put the throttle on. Oh, okay. And see if that error code actually goes away. Yeah. Yep. What's it saying there? So now it says L7, which means your battery level is 70%. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. So you could you could be like, you know, on a ride and, I don't know if I can make it. Let me check my, my fuel, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I love the fact that it's kind of, you've got a computer almost, like right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then one of the other things is that it's a sealed lead acid battery, and with all the different battery configurations that are out in the world right now, we felt it was really important to educate people about how to take care of the battery so that it will give them the longest possible life. So we put a care card on there that not only gives the quick and easy information, but, but it also pulls out and gives a visual 
to people to understand how does a sealed lead acid battery work and wow. why it's important to keep it charged all the time. That's awesome. And then on the back, because we've got the diagnostic panel, we also have the diagnostic codes right on there, and they're written um, as someone would see it on the panel, oh, as well as the quick interpretation. Then, of course, the user manual gives more information about that, but we thought it would be helpful and important for people to have a constant reminder to keep the battery charged, keep it charged, always uh, at the end of the day. Does this actually have a battery management system then of, of sorts? or It does. I'll let John speak to that. It, it does. It, with a sealed lead acid battery, you'll destroy it if you run it too low. So mm -hmm. it it stops the uh, the unit from running if you get to a point that it'll start damaging the battery. Great. Yeah, I've heard that. It's it's really cool to have that kind of thing because like you were saying, it'll extend the life of the battery mm -hmm. and then with that diagnostic you can figure out what's wrong and, and take better care of this thing right. and make it last. Right. And that's our goal is that people will be able to get the most for their money, for their time, um, and and run into less aggravation if they really understand the functioning and capability of the battery. I don't know. You're. It seems like you're pushing uh, sealed lead acid, and that's maybe more of an environmentally friendly battery too. Is that right? It's more recyclable or cheaper to produce and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, 60 to 80 percent of the material used to create a sealed lead acid battery, and that's mostly the lead and the plastic, mm -hmm. is recycled material. And then it's very easy for the user to find a place to recycle it, any place that recycles car batteries, um, and then there are national companies that are battery focused companies that they'll um, recycle them also. That's cool. But um, one of the things that we are also responding to is that for a lot of people, using a sealed lead acid will let them get into the market at a lower cost yeah. and meet their needs of a 12 mile or so radius mm -hmm. uh, or distance on the battery. But we, we're also responding to a request from um, other potential users that we have a longer range battery. So. We are looking at lithium ion. Lithium ion, cool. And the interesting thing, sealed lead acid has kind of a, a, a bad rap because it's heavy. Mm. And if you try to put enough sealed lead acid in an electric bike, there's no room or it's really uncomfortable in the rack, etc. Um, with our trailer, we can take the sealed lead acid that we have, actually it's 20% bigger than the 10 amp hour, it's 12 amp hour. Cool. And so we can get that 12 mile, 15 mile range. And then the weight doesn't bother you. You can still put 20 pounds of yeah. groceries or whatever in there, you don't notice the difference. So a sealed lead acid, um, they say that you know you can't get as many cycles out of it as a, as a lithium battery, mm -hmm. but you can get about 400 to 500 cycles out of it and do that 10 miles, you got four to 5,000 miles on your sealed lead acid wow. and treat it well. Wow, that's awesome. So we figure that's a good starter set. Four to 5,000 miles, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I love the, just, just the design, I mean, you know, I've got my bike and I like to ride it like a bike sometimes, yeah. you know, uh -huh. and, and so the fact that you can just disconnect it, super easy and um, just the, I, you know, did the test ride, that was a, it's a great design. Yeah, and I, I think on your test ride you showed how easy it is to disconnect. Yeah, um, just like a little pin. Now this is what attaches to the bike. Mm-hmm, and that's, so you can just kind of always carry that around and it's, oh man. <laughs> super, super light, super yeah, light. So you're not going to be... And then the nice thing, of course, is that you could have one of these on two different bikes, mm -hmm. um, whether it's two different in the family or you yourself own two different ones and you want to uh, have it quick and easy on and off. We will have these as an extra accessory available for sale as well as additional throttles available. For Very sale. cool. I, and I love that, too, I, just like you're saying. So you can have that on a few different bikes and, and then it's just super convenient to put the ride kick on. Yeah. Huh. Yep, it's a matter of seconds, literally, it doesn't even take a minute. Yeah, sweet. Well, very cool. Thank you. So what's what's going on over here? Uh, uh, well, I'm testing the functionality of the uh, drivetrain on the side. Okay, let's try it out. Oh, there we go. And you've got the USB connected too, yes. and so you can do some diagnostics. This, this is a uh, diagnostic cable that we hook to every unit, and uh, we reprogram it right before it leaves the factory, and hmm. then we can run it and make sure that it's good before we put it in a box. That's excellent. So they're all, you know, definitely going to work when you get it in the store. That's all the light. fully functional tests. I love that light. Thank you very much. So this is the freewheeling aspect, which is awesome if you're just cruising along on the street. 
it's not going to slow you down or anything. And I've been told that these are almost like run flat and they're they're very thorn resistant. And I can say, you know, it's pretty thick rubber. It feels really solid. Uh, so if you've ever gotten a flat tire on your bike, uh, you know it's not very fun. This is a it seems like a great design feature right there. It's awesome. There we go. So this is unit number one. Number one off the line. <laughs> Sweet. Very cool. Do you want to hop on and give it a, you know, does someone want to ride it for a second and kind of show us? You want that instead of doing it yourself? Yeah, we can do both. You, know, you want to go, Chelsea? I would love to. Okay, then. Nice. Do you know if this helmet fits your chest? It should. You got a helmet in my car, too, if not. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the little, the pant leg protector. Yeah. You got to keep <laughs> your style points. Sweet. We're already hooked up here. We've got the safety strap. Um, this is the permanent metal piece that clips on with the pin. And we've got the throttle, throttle cable. Comes all the way up here. Where's the throttle? Oh, here we go. Oh, this one looks nice. It's black. Yep. Customized. And, um, you know, the throttle is... It's important to us that people know a couple things about the throttle. One, that it can be configured on the handlebars wherever the user wants it to go. Uh -huh. So this one is a finger control, for example, but it's possible to set it up as a thumb control. You can have it on the right hand, you can have it on the left hand side. It's very versatile that way. Do you mind if I squeeze it or is it to on it's right now? It's hot. It's but live, yeah, but go ahead. Live. You'll get a jump. Oh boy, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's a sweet design. And so, in this case, your hand would be up here and you'd just use your pinky or I guess you yeah. could, mm -hmm. you know, that's cool. Yeah. And then um, it's also important for people kn to know that when that is on the handlebar, the, the brake, if they're at a stop, for example, the brake should always be squeezed. Yeah. Just because sometimes it does get bumped or whatever. And so just from a safety standpoint, it's really important to always be conservative that yeah. way. Yeah. And you were saying it's freewheeling, so it's not like letting go of the throttle is going to stop you. You've still got to provide your own right. sort of braking power. Right. The brake on your bike is what stops the bike, yourself, and the trailer. Too. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> That's awesome. It was such a neat experience to visit the Ride Kick Factory in Loveland. Just get to talk to everyone, hear the story about the very first unit, and see exactly how they put them together, and really the attention to detail that goes into each and every bike trailer. For more on the Ride Kick and the full review, including another video, check out electricbikereview.com. Thanks.